Welcome to Tuesday Tech Talks. I'm Norman Varney with AV Room Service. In the last segment, we talked about reverberation and uh, the problems of rever room reverberation, how it masks low-level resolution, low-level details, um, smears spatial cues, uh, distorts tonality, limits the dynamic range. Um, and so those were the problems. We're going to talk about the solutions in this segment. Uh, so we're going to talk about how to how you determine the the right type of acoustic treatment. And we're going to be talking about interior acoustic treatments. We're not going to be talking about construction, uh, which can help with low frequency reverberation times as far as um, the construction of the the shell, the floor, the the walls, the ceiling. If they are uh, um, constructed with the right materials and and methods. Uh, resilient materials, constrained layer damping, and so forth, that can really have an effect on the low frequencies. Um, but we're going to be talking about interior treatments that you can do after the room already exists. So we're going to be talking about the right type of acoustic treatment um, at the, the right locations and at the right quantities. So let's start out with type. Um, we have to break it up into highs and lows or mids and, and highs and low frequencies. Because of the, uh, um, the physics involved, we have to uh, use a particular type of treatment at a particular location to differentiate the two. Now, typical room treatment for reverberation times or to control first order reflections is uh, just dealing with mids and highs and you're talking foam or fiberglass that's uh, an inch or two thick. Um, but when we're talking about lower frequencies than that, we're talking about um, uh, a, a different type of, of treatment and usually more expensive, usually much larger and more obtrusive um, and hence why you don't commonly see low frequency absorbers in, in rooms. And let's talk about why that is. When we're talking about low frequencies in the room, um, it's difficult to address with your, your typical uh, acoustic treatment of fiberglass or foam because it would have to be so thick. And, and let's look at, at that. So in this chart, you'll see that using what we call resistive absorbers would be the, the wrong type for low frequencies. Um, low frequencies are, are wave acoustics and uh, the mids and highs are, are ray acoustics and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, what's happening with resistive absorbers, which is what you're going to use for mids and highs is uh, with uh, open cell foam or, or fiberglass, you're converting the sound energy into heat energy because the, the fibers are moving and they're rubbing against each other and that friction is resistive and, and, uh, and, and changes, converts the sound energy into heat energy. Now, looking at this chart, if we were to try and address 100 hertz, we need, uh, with resistive absorbers, we need to have their face at the quarter wavelength peak of, uh, of whatever the frequency is that we're trying to address. And so if you look at this chart, you can see at 100 hertz, a quarter wavelength is almost three feet long. If you had blocks of foam or fiberglass in the room that is that large, <laughs> not only would it be very obtrusive, but it wouldn't sound good either because it would be over absorbing the mids and highs. In this chart, you can see how um, how little effect it has with a large wavelength. And uh, there is a lot less velocity earlier on if it were a thinner material. So there's a difference in, in um, wave acoustics versus ray acoustics. Difference is, is that ray acoustics is dealing with uh, particle velocity and wave acoustics is dealing with particle pressure. And if we look at chart three, we'll see that uh, for low frequencies, for particle pressure, we need to have them in uh, areas of the room where that builds up. And that would be at the boundaries. 
in particular, that would be in, in the corners or, or at max, that's in the tri-corners. So a good place for base absorbers would be in the, in a say, a, a lower corner of each of the, the rooms. And from a room point, room mode point of view, which we'll go into in another segment, um, the fundamentals, all the room, mode, room modes will congregate in the corners. And you'll also find a fundamental good spot is the midway point between the walls. And uh, again, we'll get into room modes more uh, in, a, in a later segment, but there's height, width, and length. And so you have to think about that as far as um, what treatment is needed in, in what locations. Um, back to ray acoustics and particle velocity and mids and high frequencies, here we want to address the, um, the first order reflection points first. And as you can probably see, there's, uh, that panel over there addresses the first order reflection points for my two right and left speakers on that side of the wall. And then I've also got a piece up on the ceiling that addresses both of the speakers. I've got a piece behind my head that addresses this one, and this is just geometry, you know, from where the tweeter is to where the boundaries are and to where their listener position is. And then also on the back wall, the carpet and padding on the floor does a great job. Um, that will really help out a, a tremendous amount, but you still want to address these other reflections. Because if you don't, they will turn into second order and third order and on and on. In chart four, it shows small room acoustics. Now, small room acoustics is a very different acoustic. Different acoustic disciplines are um, applied to small room acoustics than, say, large auditoriums or the outdoors or, or anything different than that. And so in, um, in the section A, that means unsupported, meaning that low frequencies are too long for the, they're, they're longer than the boundary the room is as far as dimensions go. And so they're not supported. There's no reflection back. Um, they es essentially, those low frequencies are so low that they just go beyond the room, no support. And then we're talking about wave acoustics, um, room mode areas. So up to maybe 300 Hertz or so. And um, we, then have kind of a transitional stage where it, it goes from wave acoustics to ray acoustics. Ray acoustics, now we're talking geometry, like a, um, a billiard um, like a billiard ball on a pool table. And um, one easy trick that Ron has shown in an earlier segment is to have a, um, a friend help you and uh, use a mirror and run it along so that from the listening position, you see the tweeter of each of your speakers on each of the six surfaces. And then mark that with a piece of tape and address that with some acoustic treatment. Um, now that's the first thing to do because that's the smartest thing to do. That will help with the smearing of uh, spatial cues and tonality um, distortions and simultaneously, it will address the reverberation times in the room. Now with those small, shorter wavelengths, ray acoustics, uh, we're talking just mids and highs. And with the standard one inch, two inch fiberglass or, or foam, you're only addressing 500 Hertz and up. And again, let's look at um, wavelengths real quick. This will give you an idea of how long some of these wavelengths are. And, um, and how, again, how difficult it is to address anything lower than, say, about 500 hertz with such uh, thin treatment. Um, in chart six, this is actual results in a, in a room. And if you see, there is um, the yellow line is the room just with carpet and padding and regular furnishings. And so you have... A, a, a wacky reverberation, what they call a reverberation curve. And, and it's totally unique to that room, um, just like every room is unique. Um, so different curves uh, in different rooms with different construction and different furnishings and, and so forth. Now, in the with the red line, you see that there are one inch panels 
added to the room. And you can see there that it only, that they have no effect below 500 hertz. 500 hertz, it's just for reference, when you go and, and hear an orchestra tuning up that with the A440, 440 hertz, that's a, almost an octave above middle C. So from, from, so all the notes above A440 are going to be addressed with the, this treatment, with the, with typical acoustic treatment and nothing below that. So keep that in mind. And it's real easy to add too much absorption. And so it's, it's kind of like playing with an equalizer. Um, and so the room can sound too dead very quickly. It doesn't take much. Um, in the mids and highs, in other words, 500 hertz and, uh, and above, and it's not being touched below. And so it sounds very imbalanced, very unnatural. And that's why you need some other different types of acoustic treatments. In the same chart, you'll see our acoustic, we make some um, special panels that have, that include diaphragmatic absorbers in them so that they can go down lower in frequency response. And you'll see in, in that same chart, the same room with the treatment done right. And, um, and it's very controlled and it's very linear. And so it sounds very natural. Now you still want some reverberation times in the room. Otherwise it, it psychoacoustically, it's, it's not, it's not natural and it's not comfortable if you don't have some kind of lower frequency decay. And that's on your side because it's so hard to get rid of anyway. So you actually want a little longer tail in the lower frequencies. Um, so how is all of this determined? Um, an acoustical engineer would, would estimate, they would mo computer model this, and they do that by including all the noise reduction, reduction coefficients of the construction and the furnishings and then the acoustic treatment. And that's done. All those materials are tested in reverberation labs. Ron will probably insert a, um, a photo uh, of a, a test in a lab here. All the materials are um, tested in a reverberation lab so that you know at what frequencies, how much uh, attenuation is obtained. And so we've done that with um, all of our panels. And um, so then you can plug in those and find out how much treatment you need to, uh, to add to make the room just right. And then of course, you would then, I mean, ideally you would have somebody then test it on site and make sure it's just right or make adjustments um, as needed. So computer modeling, like in chart eight, um, that's an example of a, a model room. And so all the, in, in red, that's the, the room without treatment. So that's just the furnishings, the carpet, the, uh, the couches and so forth in there. And then the estimated is um, down below that in blue with treatment, with our, our treatment that does address lower frequencies. And we've got a couple of different types of, uh, you know, there's a, an expensive type that has a stretch fabric that you don't see it at all. And then we have some panels that you actually hang that also have diaphragmatic absorbers in them. And then the black line is the uh, is the target line, the what we're we're shooting for. So at the end here, I thought it would be interesting to uh, um, dive a little deeper into what it means to have those first order reflection points um, covered. And so I thought um, I, I drew out just one speaker and, and the reflections of two sidewalls, and you can see in in chart nine. You can see in this chart the um, the first order reflections of the two sidewalls versus the the direct sound, and you can see there, you know, actually did the measurements. You can see what the delay is and what the um, the decibel drop is with that absorption. Now, with the, a first order reflection, ideally, you want to have you want to attenuate that by about 15 dB. So again, you're probably just dealing with um, uh, regular fiberglass, one inch or two inch fiberglass, will do that. 
um, you can attenuate, say, 500 hertz and up um, between 10 and 15 dB if you, um, if you hit those first order reflection points. That'll essentially make it disappear. If it's not addressed, this is what it sounds like. Ron, play a, a clip of, of pink noise. This is a, this sound clip of pink noise is an actual uh, reflection and then treated reflection. The first three or four seconds is untreated and the last is treated. And this one, this shows what that, uh, that test is, what the results are. You can take a look at that. Um, and, uh, and so you can visualize as well as hear what we're talking about. And like I said earlier, it does change. I mean, you can hear the tonality. It also changes the, uh, um, if you had an image that was in the middle and you had that reflection, it would pull it a little to the side of the reflection and not where it's supposed to be. So when you correct that reflection, um, it, the image is solid where it's supposed to be. Now I thought I'd talk about some of the things that you can do on your own besides just little panels like this. Curtains are really effective and bookcases can be very effective to, uh, to help with mids and highs and reverberation and even first order reflection points. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is if the room is too dead already, if there's too much upholstery or and carpet and and whatever, then um, you can address first order reflections with diffusers. And a bookcase can work as, as both. It can, uh, if you've got staggered books, um, bring them out so they're not all the way in the back, stagger them so that their faces are, are, are not all in, in a line, um, open them up, separate them. That can work as a, a pretty good absorber and diffuser. And um, couches, sofas, if they're really good low frequency absorbers. If they are leather, then they're probably not going to be reflected in the mids and highs. If they're upholstery, then if they're upholstered, then they're going to be really broadband absorbers. Um, our, our panels, our FRP panels, we have, we have a bunch of different panels to address different frequencies, as in in that chart seven, you can see their noise reduction coefficients and how effective they are at different bands uh, in, of the spectrum. And so they're good for uh, low frequencies, room modes, as well as, as mids and highs. Well, that was a heck of a lot to cover in such a short amount of time. I hope that you got something out of it and uh, would love to hear your comments below. In the next segment, we'll talk about room modes. We'll do a crash course on, on room modes. I'll see you then. Thanks.